Recently, I had the opportunity to sail on the allure of the seas from Royal Caribbean with a friend of mine, and it far exceeded every expectation I had. Let me be clear, it wasn't cheap, but I'm glad I forked over the cash because there is no way I could cover all of the exciting things this cruise has to offer in one video. But I'm going to walk you through my full experience, so let's set sail. Cheesiest line ever. So sorry. Royal Caribbean does not even know I'm making this video. I paid to go on this cruise with my friend. Treat yourself. But I'd like to do another one. So please, if you could check out my description, click some of my affiliate links to learn about the gear I'm using to make this video. It would really help me out. Help me help you. We'll start with the boarding process. Boarding is usually boring, right? There's ship tags, luggage, long lines. It's all boring. But let me just say that Royal Caribbean did everything they could to make this experience fun, even though we weren't on the ship yet. There was music and people were laughing and welcoming us in. It was great. I thought this would be like a big sweaty hassle, but they somehow made it fun. But still, all I could think of was getting on the ship and grabbing my first cocktail. I was on vacation, right? Which reminds me, both me and my friend bought the drink package. Everyone, say hello to Nathan, my buddy who went with me on this cruise. It was his idea. I am forever grateful. Okay, back to that drink package. You're thinking, when is the best time to buy the drink package, Patrick? When can I save the most amount of money? Here it is. Here's the tip you've all been waiting for. The best time to buy your cruise drink package is now. The answer is always now. Purchase anything in the cruise app on the cruise planner that you know you want and watch for price changes. If the price drops, you can cancel and repurchase. It takes a minute at most. But if the price goes up and you've waited, you're just out of luck. And this is true of almost anything you purchase inside of that cruise app or on the website. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. So right away, when you enter the ship, you're welcomed by so much going on. There's so much noise, there's so much fun. But my friend Nathan and I immediately, we went to the pools, we went to the bar and we grabbed a Long Island iced tea. I can still taste it. I want to go back. From there, Nathan had an idea and it made me furious. Oh, this is nice. He said, I'm going to go sign up for the spa tour to get the spa package. Trust me, it's worth it. Area, private pool areas, uh, hot stone lounge chairs. I couldn't believe my ears. I didn't come all this way to sit in a spa in the middle of the ocean. I wanted to kind of like let loose and party, but I was wrong. I went on a four night cruise and they sold me. I went on the tour and I ended up paying $78 to have full access to the thermal spa for the entire cruise. How's bragging camp going? The thermal spa includes heated beds, relaxation rooms, several saunas, walk-in showers that have like these rain settings. We're gonna come back to this, but it's time to talk about our room. But I, but you gotta know, the spa package, do it. We're coming back to it. But before we get to our room, I, I wanna talk about another room that is secret on the ship. Yes, first cruise secret coming right up. Okay, I'm gonna say it. Nobody wants to be the person that destroys the bathroom in a bus, an airplane, a small hotel room, or the smallest of hotel rooms, a cruise ship room. So I'm gonna show you a secret where you can find the secret bathroom. See this section right here on, on the side of the ship here, and on the side of the ship here are the regular state rooms. But that sign I just showed you goes into the hallway to the bigger balcony staterooms that face either uh, the back or the front of the ship. And on the eighth floor, there's a tiny little sign to a private one-person bathroom should you need it. Now, here's the thing about the secret bathroom. Sometimes there's someone else who also knows about the secret bathroom and you show up and they're in there. Listen, I'm not mad. They're on the same game as I am. Poop on, secret bathroom finder, poop on. You, David. Now to the second most important room, not the secret bathroom, but your actual room room. Let's go on a room tour. Okay, it's room tour time. This isn't gonna take long, but what cruise ship review would be complete without a room tour? It's gonna be short because it's a tiny room, but here we go. So right off the bat, when you enter, you're met with the bathroom to your right, in this room that is. Now here's the shower, okay? Now I haven't used the shower once, and I'm going to tell you why in this video. Trust me, stay with me. Here is the potty right here, but we also have a secret potty option. Oh yes, we do, but this is your own personal 
potty, bathroom, very standard, you get it. Mirror right here for looking amazing and checking yourself out or looking, well. These are my recreation clothes. Couch right here, little table, side table that we moved over here, closet with a safe, shelves, shelves. We still have some storage here. We ran into an issue, the, the friend that I'm with, because we needed to plug in some stuff over by the bed. Here's what we find found out. It looks like this is the only charging station, but it isn't. There's actually right behind the mattress, furthest from the window or furthest from this wall, uh, uh, closest to the outside of the ship, you will have some outlets for charging stuff and plugging stuff in, no problem. Your beds will come together. We asked to have them separated because I'm here with a friend. I'm not here with my wife and we wanted some room, some space, more shelves over here, phone, a couple bedside tables. Then we get to the window. Now this, oh my goodness, I love this. Look at that. And we have this lovely banister going into our window. <laughs> window. Uh, this, is, this is the Bahamas, that's where we're at right now. Uh, yeah, great views. We needed distilled water in our room for this contraption that my friend has requested it. There it is. And then of course we have a refrigerator right here, which I absolutely love that that's there and some drawers. So tiny room, but hopefully you're not spending tons of time in your room. Hopefully you're out on the ship partying, but maybe that's not you. Maybe you want to just stand here and you know, sleep, what, can you see it? Maybe you wanna uh, sleep off the adventure. You can do that. One gripe about the room. I wish it got colder. That's just me though. That's just me. Wish it got colder. Now here's the thing. Most people are not gonna spend a ton of time in their room. You wanna be on the ship. You wanna be having fun, experiencing wild excursions and having the time of your life. So let's do our due diligence and talk about all the ship hotspots you need to visit. But first, I told you we'd hit the thermal spa, which is in reality, an actual literal hotspot. This is how I'm starting every morning. In the thermal spa, there are private walk-in showers that are, I don't know, 17 times the size of your tiny room shower. Not 17 times, but way, way larger. And there's this shower curtain that separates you from the rest of the thermal spa, but nobody can see you in there. There, there are these rain settings that make you feel like you're in the Amazon experiencing a flood. There's liquid soap. This is where it's at. I walked into the thermal spa every morning. I grabbed my complimentary bathrobe. Morning one, I was like, oh, I, I don't need one. You can just save it for someone else. And they were like, no, please take it. By the third day, I was like, oh, where is my bathrobe? And then I laid on the heated bed for a while. Every morning, while just kind of scrolling through my phone, relaxing. I hit the sauna after that to really like get my sweat on. And then I would hit the rain shower. And then after showering off, I would rejoin society on the rest of the ship for fun after feeling completely rejuvenated from the thermal spa. It was incredible. So it was my favorite hot spot. but let's talk about some other hot spots. It's a huge ship. I'm not gonna say that I can hit them all in this video, nor did I even get to see all the hotspots, but here are some of my favorites. Let's start from the top and go down. On deck 15, we are greeted by so many different attractions from the Serene Solarium to the adrenaline pumping flow riders, which I didn't hit because I knew that I would break my femur or something. Too old. But Deck 15 offers something for everyone. And we stroll past the beach pool and the H2O zone and the vibrant energy of the sports courts that beckon us to join in the fun. If you are looking to like snack on some nachos, play basketball, uh, go on the flow rider, Deck 15 is where it's at. But one deck down, Deck 14, it's, it's pool paradise. Deck 14 has four expansive pools and numerous hot tubs. It's the perfect spot to soak up the sun. There's also tons of games happening there, belly flop contests, it's loud. There's often live music, there's ice cream. I mean, whether you pr prefer lounging by the main pool or dipping your toes in the tranquil beach pool, it's awesome. And there's even like a little splash pad for the kids. So if you're looking for fun, wear your sunscreen, go to deck 14. One deck down, adventure awaits, Deck 13 is for our thrill seekers. Now, it's not for me. This is where you find the zip line. Miss me with the zip line. I am afraid of heights. I walked by it several times, but there are other adrenaline junkies out there that will find their fix here. 
but they are crazy people and we need to watch ourselves around them. Thankfully, there's also mini golf. It's a really busy attraction, but it's just such a fun activity that almost anybody can participate in. And there's tons of other activities up there that don't require you to hang in the air over the ship. I want to rewind a second and go back up to deck 16, where we experience peace. This is where you see panoramic views, soothing pools. It's the ultimate oasis for relaxation. And somewhere around there, you're also going to find an adults only area, 18 plus. You still have all sorts of food. You have people serving drinks, but you're not going to have a ton of kids running around. I have three little dudes. And hey, listen, I am fine admitting that every once in a while, I just need a break. If you're looking for that break from kids, go up to deck 16. You can indulge in a refreshing drink at the sky bar or unwind with a dip in the pool. It is, it's pure bliss. I found myself here daily. As a matter of fact, both Nathan and I found ourselves taking some naps there. It was amazing. I don't regret it at all. You'll also find a separate buffet here that is different from Windjammers, the main buffet where everybody just goes to get food all throughout the day. The food is better than it should be. I want to say that. Okay, let's keep moving down through our decks, finding hot spots and fun stuff for us all to enjoy. Down on deck eight, we find Central Park. Hilarious. I live in New York City where Central Park I don't know, exists. I wanted to hate Central Park and get all sarcastic about it, but I loved Central Park on the ship. But right above deck eight, where Central Park is, is the private balconies on deck nine that overlook Central Park. And I never saw anyone else using them. The best part about it is that our room was on deck nine. So almost every morning, Nathan and I would leave our room at different times and we would find each other on these balconies, drinking coffee and relaxing as we overlooked Central Park to start our day. Come in close, pro tip, don't ever sit on this little balcony with this door closed, unless you wanna have a private conversation. It gets really warm, especially out in the middle of the ocean when it's hot. So you wanna open this door because then the breeze of the internal ship temperature pushes out onto the balcony and it feels super natural and it's the, it's the perfect temperature. Okay, on to the next thing. This was a quiet spot to relax and enjoy the benefits of the ship while getting away from the busyness of the ship. Okay, we've gone down to deck eight and then back up to deck nine to overlook Central Park. And I wanna go back down to deck eight to talk a little bit more about Central Park. I'm sorry, I can't do it without the air quotes. Central Park, like I said, is great. In the evening, I even found some surprising entertainment there. They have performers playing in intimate settings that make it easy to relax and enjoy some music. Relaxation for me was kind of the definition of this trip. Now you might be a party person, belly flop contest, you're on the flow rider, you're doing the, um, uh, the, the zip line, all of that. That's great. Go up to the decks and do all those things. Maybe at night you're in the pubs partying and dancing, doing karaoke. That's great. But if you're looking to relax, Central Park is the place to do it in the evening where they have soft piano music. You can grab a cocktail and kind of unwind. Okay, so I'm still in Central Park. And if you're looking for a breakfast spot, obviously, you know, at the end of the ship, there's the Windjammer Cafe, or you can schedule a breakfast, or you can go down to Johnny Rockets and get breakfast. There's tons of options for breakfast. But one of the places I love is Park Cafe. It's a tiny little cafe that has uh, pastries and has like uh, bagels and locks and capers and onions. And they're basically trying to create a New York City ba bagel shop in the middle of Central Park, in the middle of a cruise ship. And I think they succeeded along with having really great pastries and bagels and snacks for breakfast or any time of day, they also have like Starbucks uh, coffee. So you can get your regular drip coffee anywhere. But here, you can get your Americana, you can get your espresso, you can get uh, your lattes, etc. So first morning, I went to Windjammers to eat for breakfast. But then when I found this place, I haven't stopped coming. It's not only does it have food that in my opinion is a little bit better, it's also never as busy as Windjammers, which makes sense because Windjammers is a big buffet, you get the idea. So if you're looking for a quiet spot to eat breakfast or even to grab a coffee, Park Cafe. If you have the drink package, not only can you have all of the cocktails you want, all of the you know beers and wines you want and things like that, but you can also grab water bottles and coffee, even coffee drinks that are more specialty from the Starbucks in Central Park. Let's get down to deck six. This is where we find the Boardwalk Carousel. 
for the kids. We find Johnny Rockets for, for burgers. It's such a fun spot. And this is where we also find the Aqua Theater. And the Aqua Theater on that same deck is fun. Personally, it was massively stressful for me to watch someone dive into the water, but you're already on a boat. I don't know, we all have issues, don't ask. Further down, you find deck five. This is where we are in the promenade. The action isn't all outside. Deck five is where the fun inside stuff happens. There are shops and places to eat, and there's always free pizza. There's never a dull moment here, and sometimes there's even a parade? <laughs> so right behind me, they're having this like anchors away parade where uh, all these entertainment uh, employees, or as they call it, the entertainment family, who comes out and goes through the fifth floor uh, with this big spectacle saying, hey, the ship's leaving the, the location we're currently at. Fun for the kids, definitely fun for families and things like that. But if you are on the fifth floor, you will get stopped and will be you'll be unable to move during that little parade. So you wanna go up to the sixth floor where they have seating, they have balconies, and you can look down at that parade uh, without being pushed around and disturbed. If you wanna see the parade, go to the sixth floor. If you enjoy the nightlife, there's also so much to take in here. There are classy piano bars, there's lively Irish pubs, there's karaoke, it's the best. So I would go to the Irish pub and listen to a guitar player sing all the classics while having an Irish car bomb. Then I would go over and grab a free slice of pizza. Then I'd go to the more piano bar to get an espresso martini and dance and sing karaoke. It's the best. I had one of my most fun nights on deck five where all that was happening and you should really check it out. A little further down on deck four, we find all the entertainment. We find live theater, full Broadway theater productions in the Blaze Theater. And then we find live comedy at the comedy club called Comedy Live. Cool name. Couldn't go with like giggles or, I, I don't know. And I gotta say, all the entertainment is good. It's not second rate because it's on a cruise ship. The comedy's funny, the shows are good. I you gotta check it out. And don't forget, my spot, Casino Royale, is also found on the same floor if you're feeling lucky and I need to take a break because Royal Caribbean has so much of my money due to the fact that I was feeling lucky. Okay, I'm back. I enjoyed the casino, I just, I didn't, I didn't fare well but I would happily go back. The casino was so much fun and there was so many people having fun playing games. Anyway, moving down to deck three, we find all of the ship's restaurants. Now included in the price of your cruise, you have Windjammers and all the other buffets and you have the main dining hall. But these restaurants require a special reservation and often they require an additional cost, but it's worth it. The restaurants are amazing and I highly suggest you check it out. I gotta say that there have been cruises I've gone on where I've made reservations at all of these restaurants and they're incredible. And there's also been cruises where I've just stuck with the main dining hall and wind jammers to save my money just to lose it at the casino, son of a I needed another anger break. I'm back now. With all this excitement, I know that some of you are going to need some place quiet to get away from all the noise. And I know I'm highlighting the quiet places a bit because it's not hard to find the loud places. The quiet places are the secret places that keep you sane and relaxed throughout your trip. So welcome to the library. If you need to step away, this is one of the best places to do it. Bring a book or take one from the shelf. I'm not necessarily a library guy normally, but the stillness of this place brought me so much peace. Let me be honest. I know that we're talking about a lot of stuff in this video, but this is just the tip of the iceberg, which is probably a phrase I shouldn't use in a cruise review. Yeah. The Allure of the Seas is a 10 out of 10. I immediately began planning my next Royal Caribbean voyage before I even got off the ship. And if you love to travel, you should check it out too. And you should also check out this video.